Good day students once again. I will be doing question 15 of the 2017 question bank uh, by the name Ioka TLTD out of 25 marks and this is on the topic of process costing. As usual I have to start with the requirements and I've already highlighted other uh, sentences because of their importance to take note of. So under requirements, we are required to prepare the statement, or which is quantity statement, and we are also required to prepare the production cost statement, and we are also required to prepare the cost allocation statement. So now this is the full process costing. And the marks is 8, 3, and 12 marks, and another 2 is under number B. Number B, we are to determine whether the shortcut method can be applied in the preparation of the quantity statement for EOCAT LTD for the month of April 2015 if losses no longer occur at the end of the process but when the process is at 30% complete. So now that means currently the loss occurs at the end of the period but they say assume that the loss does no longer occur at the end of the period but when the process is 30 percent complete therefore now will a shortcut method be applied or be used so now let me read uh, the very short information for this question on process costing it says eocat ltd manufactures a single a product by means of a single manufacturing process and uses a process costing system. The following information is available for the month of April in the year 2015 and <clears throat> we have uh, information on the first day of April which, which means is the opening balance of the month of April and this was the work that was still in process opening balance and the units were 50,000 that were incomplete uh, from the month of uh, March became opening balance in the month of April 50,000 the cost of material uh, That was part and parcel of the opening amounted to 88,750 and the cost of labor plus overheads which is called the conversion cost uh, With regards to the opening inventory is 44,000 rents. So now these are the cost of the opening uh, that are provided to us then after we have the next part which is 150,000 units that were put or placed into production in the month of April 2015 and the cost of the material that was introduced in the current period was 267,250 and conversion cost uh, for the for the units that were introduced in the current period amounted to 120,900 then after we have the units that were completed and transferred during the month of april and that amounted to 147,500 units that were completed in the current period and by the end of the month of april 2015 there was work in process which is 15,000 uh, units meaning these are the units that are incomplete meaning incomplete units closing inventory in other words so closing inventory is 15,000 units and with regards to material, it was 100% complete, meaning all the material that was needed was all introduced um, in the beginning of the process. However, closing inventory was 60% complete in terms of conversion cost. So now that will be the stage of completion regarding the cl closing inventory uh, on the conversion cost uh, or conversion units part. Then under additional information, it says material is added at the beginning of the process. So take note that if we add the material at the beginning of the process, it means all the material that we need gets to be introduced at the beginning of the process. So now as the process goes by, all the material that we need are all there because they were all introduced at the beginning of the process. And I want to go back to the closing inventory that I just spoke about here in this case. We have units that are not complete and the number of units that are not complete is 15,000 units. But these units are 100% complete in terms of material. 
meaning we don't need to add any material now in this process because all the material that we need is already there. So because of that, hence material now becomes 100%, but these units are not complete, yet material is complete with regards uh, to the closing inventory because it was introduced at the beginning of the process. So I was just uh, emphasizing on this point where the material is introduced beginning of the process. And most of the times material is introduced beginning of the, pre of the process. Conversion costs are incurred evenly throughout the process. Remember this part means that uh, we are incurring conversion costs as the process of production pass by or goes by. And this is very similar or very easy because a uh, conversion cost, we are referring to labor cost, direct labor cost, and we are referring to indirect labor cost. And as employees are producing the products, they get paid. We meaning we cannot incur conversion cost in advance, meaning we cannot uh, introduce or add conversion cost at the beginning of the process. As we produce, we consume electricity because electricity is part and parcel of the conversion cost. So now as we produce using the machine and consuming electricity, therefore now we are incurring all those conversion costs evenly. That is why most of the times conversion costs will be incurred evenly. There are few circumstances if they are where conversion costs can be incurred in the beginning of the process. That is not something that I, I can remember of because we incur them as the process of production uh, goes by. So now that is why conversion costs are normally incurred evenly because we cannot incur them in advance. You cannot consume electricity in other ways in advance. So now number three say that <clears throat> normal losses are estimated at 15% of the input units that reaches the wastage point. So now we need to know what is the wastage point and all the units that reach that wastage point therefore now 15 percent of them will be a normal loss then we go to number four number four says losses occur at the end of the process meaning at the end of the process when the units are completed therefore now normal loss will be uh, calculated remember closing inventory i want to go back here <clears throat> closing inventory uh, when we closed, it was 60% complete with regards to conversion cost. And remember, the minute some units are regarded as closing inventory, meaning work in process, meaning these units of the closing inventory are not yet complete. So meaning they have not yet reached the end of the stage of the process, meaning they are not complete. Therefore, now that will mean closing inventory of 15,000 units will not be part and parcel of the units that will be inspected in the current period. So closing inventory will not be inspected. Therefore, now we will not calculate our normal loss on the closing inventory units of 15,000 because they are not yet complete. Therefore, they are not yet at the end of the process of production. Therefore, now we go to number five. Number five says, EOCAT LTD values inventory according to the weighted average method. I always say this is uh, the easiest method because when units are completed, you don't worry about starting with the opening and uh, put into production. This is the very easy one. We just take all the units based on the average, which is the weighted average. So now the first thing when it comes to process costing, <clears throat> before we do anything, I prefer to start with the calculations of the normal loss. I have to start with the calculation of the normal loss, where we are calculating uh, calculating of losses, in fact, not only normal loss. And the statement said that uh, normal loss occurs at the end of the process, and it is 15% of the input that reaches the wastage point, meaning the point of inspection or the point of wastage. So now we need to determine if uh, will all the units pass the point of spoilage in the current period. First, we have our opening units, which was uh, 50,000 units. So we start by saying opening units. Then after we record what was put into production, we have our opening units and our opening units 
they are 50,000 then we have units that were put into production put into production and the units that were put into production they amounted to 115,000 units so we have 50,000 units and we have 150,000 units that was put into production remember these are the units that were put into production place into production during the current month of april we are focusing on the number of units we are not on the cost yet when we do the cost statement which is uh, the second uh, bullet point will deal with the cost and also when we are doing the cost allocation statement then we'll deal with the cost now we are still doing the preparations in order for us to answer the complete quantity statement we are focusing now on the quantity statement which is the number of units uh, that will be inspected and that we have to calculate the normal loss on therefore now we say we have 150,000 that was put into production and our closing units is 15,000 units so now we have our closing units and our closing units is 15,000 units so now before we test if did all the or will all the units pass the point of spoilage we first have to ask ourselves did this uh, inventory uh, pass the point of spoilage so now let us go our opening inventory remember process costing has uh, normal assumptions or normal rules that you must always master them in your mind <clears throat> opening inventory or one of them says opening inventory start at a specific percentage opening inventory start at a specific percentage and it goes up to 100 percent so in this case our opening inventory was 25 percent complete with regards to the conversion cost remember material is introduced at the beginning of the period so we don't have to worry about material so opening inventory is at uh, 25 percent now let me just draw this uh, temporal timeline here so now meaning when we started in the current period we had our opening inventory which was opening here and that opening was at 25 percent so now if this is 25 percent and we know that this is 50,000 in terms of the number of units one rule says that opening inventory start at a specific percentage and the specific percentage in this case being 25 percent the rule which is the rule does not change or the normal golden rule or the assumption says opening inventory start at a given percentage and it goes up to 100 percent so now whenever there's opening inventory you must know that it will go up to 100 percent so now the question is where do we do the point of spoilage point of spoilage occurs at the end of the process so now will the opening inventory reach the end of the process yes why that is yes is because of the rule that says opening inventory start at a given percentage which in this case is 25 and it goes up to 100 percent so the opening inventory will reach the point of spoilage only because of that normal rule then the second rule we have inventory that was put into production inventory that was put into production is 150,000 so now we can say here put into production and put into production is 150,000 units and this is another cotton rule that whatever you put into production will go up to 100 percent so now the question is once again will the put into production reach the point of spoilage the answer is yes why is because of the normal rule that says uh, put into production start at zero percent this is zero percent and it goes up to hundred percent and our normal loss or spoilage takes place at hundred percent when the units are completed meaning at the end of the process of production so now meaning our opening and our put into production will form part and parcel of the units that uh, will reach the point of spoilage therefore now we go to the closing units remember the units that are closing are the units that were part and parcel of what we put into production in the current period therefore now 
Out of the units that we put into production in the current period, 15,000 of them, they were not complete. So now that's why now we say always whatever we put into production will go up to 100%. Therefore now whatever is closing, meaning whatever did not reach the 100%, it will be by default form part of the closing inventory. So now in this case, we are simply saying that, or I am simply saying that, the closing inventory of the 15,000 units will not reach the point of spoilage because the closing inventory is sitting at 60% here. And that is our closing inventory at 60%. We have closing inventory, which is 60%. It is closing inventory. Remember, closing inventory would have started at 0 0.0. Closing inventory would have started at 0%. Therefore, now closing inventory will go up to a given percentage. So now that is where our closing inventory is. It started at zero. Remember, closing inventory, another assumption is the fact that closing inventory is not one of the units that were the opening. Closing inventory is not part of the units that were in the opening. Hence, another rule said previously that whatever is the opening, it goes up to 100%. So the number of units that were in the opening inventory, they do not stop and become opening. Whatever you start with or whatever you open with, it goes up to 100%. These are the normal rules that have been introduced in the costing accounting subject for the purpose of simplifying process costing. Hence, it's very important that you master uh, these normal uh, golden rules. So our closing inventory started at 0%. And it went up to a given percent, and the given percent is 60% in this case. So now our closing inventory will not pass the point of spoilage. And as I said to you that the number of units of the closing inventory, which is 15,000 units, they are part and parcel of the units that were introduced in the current period. So now, meaning out of that 150,000 units, closing inventory will not pass the point of spoilage. Therefore, it must be deducted from the units that were put into production because the previous assumption was that all the units that were put into production, which in this case was 150,000, we said that they will all go up to 100%. So now if you say 15,000 of them would not have reached the end, therefore now we need to deduct this 15,000 from that 150,000. I want to add the other dimension for this uh, part with regards to the opening. If opening would not have passed the point of spoilage in the current period, it will not be deducted. I want to repeat that. If the opening, which is the 50,000 units, was not going to pass the point of spoilage in the current period, therefore the opening was not going to be deducted. The reason why we don't deduct is because opening is not part and parcel of what we put into production. Meaning, if the opening will not would not have or was not going to pass the point of spoilage in the current period, that will mean that opening inventory would have been inspected in the previous period. So now in the current period, it would have already been or have passed the point of spoilage. And if that is the case, therefore now you just ignore it. So in this case, remember opening will pass the point of spoilage. But in the case where it does not pass, you just ignore it. You don't record anything. You leave it as blank like that. Because if you deduct it, it will be wrong for you to deduct that from 150,000. It's only the closing that you deduct because the closing is part of the units that were put into production and which we assume that they will go up to 100%, but 15,000 of them will not go to 100%. Therefore, now we deduct only that 15,000. So please uh, make sure that you master that, uh, whatever I have said uh, in this uh, timeline. I, however, do have another video on the same uh, uh, well-detailed introduction and overview of the calculation of the normal loss, more particularly using uh, the timeline approach. So now our closing inventory, we said that it will not pass the point of spoilage. Therefore, now the minute it does not pass the point of spoilage, therefore now it must be deducted from the units that were put into production because the closing 
is part and parcel of the units that we put into production. Therefore, now we'll have uh, 200,000 minus 15,000 units, and this becomes 185,000 units. So now, this will be units of normal loss, if I may call so. Therefore, now we calculate <coughs> our normal loss. Our normal loss is 15% of the units, which is 15% of 185,000 becomes our normal loss. 15% of the units that reach the point of spoilage. And 185,000 units would or will pass the point of spoilage. And 15% of them will be the normal loss. So now we have 185,000 times that by 15% and it gives us 27,750 units. So now immediately after you have calculated uh, the normal loss, which is 27,000. So now we need to determine if is there any abnormal loss or not. So now we need to determine if is there any abnormal loss or not. And I calculate abnormal loss uh, in this approach. What I do, I start with the opening units. I say I have the opening units and my opening units were 50,000 units. Then I have put into production. Put into production. And the units that were put into production were 150,000 units. So now these are the units that were available to be co produced and completed. Then after I <coughs> less completed, I less completed, and the units that were completed were 147,500. Let us go and refresh there. If I said opening and my opening was given to us as 50,000 opening plus put into production minus units that were completed this should give us closing and i call this expected closing it's just my own way of explanation expected closing meaning closing before losses were taken into account so now we say our opening is 50,000 plus 150,000, which is 200,000, minus 147,500. This gives us 52,500. These are the units that were supposed to be closing if there was no normal loss or if there was no abnormal loss. Therefore, now we say we compare this with the actual closing. This is what was supposed to be closing if there is no loss. So it's more like this is our normal closing, if I may call so. You can also call it normal closing, meaning without a normal loss. So the normal closing is 52,000 rands. But how much is our actual closing? Our actual closing is 15,000 units. Why there is this closing of 52,000 different from the actual closing? Because the actual closing, we calculated it to be 15,000 and it was given to us. So now the reason why what was supposed to be closing is not the same as the actual closing is because of the loss. That's the simple way to explain it. The reason why what was supposed to be closing is not the same as actual closing is because of the losses that took place. So now hence I have normal closing of 52,500 or expected closing without losses being taken into account. So now the difference between the two will be the total loss. The difference between the two will be the total loss. So minus 27,750. So now this gives me 24,000. 750 which is in terms of units 24,750 in terms of units so now this is the total loss therefore now we say if this is the total loss and the total loss is as the results of the expected closing versus the actual closing therefore now we say 
we do have our normal loss. If this is the total loss, therefore now we must say we have our normal loss. And our normal loss is 27,750. Therefore now we can see that the total loss is not the same as the normal loss. Therefore now after deducting the normal loss, this will give us what we call abnormal loss. Because our total loss is not the same or is not equal to our normal loss. Therefore the difference becomes abnormal loss. Remember the difference between the expected closing and the actual closing is the total loss. So that's how I approach uh, this calculation. Therefore now we say minus uh, Let me check. I think I calculated wrongly there. 52,500 minus 15,000. Then that gives us 37,000, not the 27,000. Don't know how I've done that mistake. Apologies for that. 37,500 is our total loss. Apologies for that. I just I did not take note of that. So we have 37,500 as our total loss. Therefore now we say our total loss compare that with the normal loss. And we can see that our total loss is not the same as our normal loss. And our total loss is greater than, here's our total loss, is greater than our normal loss. Therefore the difference becomes abnormal loss. The calculation, uh, the approach still remains the same. Minus 27,750. Therefore, now this gives us 9,750 as our abnormal loss. And if we say abnormal loss plus normal loss, this should give us the total loss. So now this is the first approach before we do the quantity statement. So that in the quantity statement, we just do the copy and paste. Uh, if you feel this is a very useful, please use this approach of calculating the abnormal loss. First, determine the expected units, deduct the actual closing units. Then you get the total loss. You say visa versa or compare this with the normal loss, then the difference becomes abnormal loss. That is my formula. Remember not to forget that you first have to calculate the normal loss on the units that uh, would have passed the point of spoilage in the current period of production. So now let me go to the quantity statement. Let me go to the quantity statement. And the quantity statement is all about the units. It's only all about the units. We have the output column. Or we first have the input column. Then we have the details. And we have the output column. And after the output column, we have material. Then after we have conversion. I will not provide uh, the columns for the percentages also because of the only because of the limited space. Just throwing lines in between. So now we had our opening units, which must be written as opening. Opening work in process. First of April, if you want. Opening units is under input 50,000. We had after put into production. And our put into production are mounted to 150,000 units. These are the units that were placed into production in the current period. They was put into production. Then after we have units that were completed, completed and transferred, and the units that were completed and transferred was 147,000. 500, 147,000, 500, and 147,500. Then after we have to account for our normal loss. 
and our normal loss is calculated at 27,750 units. Remember, normal loss occurs at the end of the process. So now, normal loss of 27,750 must be apportioned to all the columns. Even conversion cost 27,750, 27,750. We don't have to apportion it when it comes to conversion. Then after we have abnormal loss, abnormal loss, and our abnormal loss also, which amounted to 9,750, abnormal loss of 9,750, let me confirm, yes, 9,750, and the minute you do these calculations and you transfer them to your workings, then you will get marks even if perhaps we have calculated the abnormal loss incorrectly. Then we have our abnormal loss of 9,750. Abnormal loss of 9,750. Then after now we go to our closing inventory. Closing inventory amounted to 15,000 units. In terms of material, all the material that we needed was there. But conversion cost will be 15,000, term that by 60% because the closing inventory was 60% uh, complete with regard to conversion cost. If you remember that closing inventory with regards to conversion cost, it was 60% complete. So now our equivalent units will be 60% of the total closing units, which will give us 9,000 units. So now this is how simple the weighted average uh, quantity statement is. So now in this case, it means we can just calculate our total, which is 200,000 units. 200,000 units. And this will also be 200,000 units because there was no apportionment. The only column that will change is the column of the conversion cost. This is 147,500. Uh, plus 27,750 uh, plus 9,750 plus 9,000. Uh, then this gives us 194,000 units, meaning 194,000 equivalent units. So now this is the end of our quantity statement, meaning the end of the first requirement, which we were to do the quantity statement. So now requirement number or main figure one of requirement a is complete so now after doing quantity statement we have to do the cost statement we have to do the cost statement and in the cost statement we are dealing with the costs here cost statement we are dealing strictly with the costs then under cost we have the cost of material We'll have the cost of material. We'll also have the cost of conversion costs. Then after, there will be a total column. We have uh, the cost of material, cost of conversion cost. Then after, the last column will be the total column. Last column will be the total column. <clears throat> so now, we have to check if was there any opening balance, meaning opening work in process value of material. So the opening work in process of raw material, I think it was given to us. Now we are focusing on the rent value because we are doing the cost statement. Under the first date of April, this was the opening balance and material opening balance was 88,750. So now this will be 88,750. 88,750. And our conversion cost, I think it was 44,000 rands, if I still remember. It was 44,000 rands opening a conversion cost that was attached to our opening units of 50,000 rands. Then after we have the ones that was put into production and put into production was 267,250 and 12900. 267,250, uh, 267,250 and 120,900. This will be put 
into production. Meaning production in the current period. <clears throat> then now from here we can calculate the total uh, of all the costs. Total of the cost, which is material of 88,750. We add uh, 267,250. Therefore, now this will give us 356,000 rands, which is the total cost of material by the end of the current month of April. 44,000 rands plus 120,900. This gives us 164,000 rands. 900 rands plus 350,000, 350,000. This is 510,200, 920,900. 520,900, then after we say 88,750 material plus conversion of 44,000. This is 132,750. 267,250 plus 120,900. This is 280,150,000. 250 plus 120,900. Oh, it's 388,150. 388,150 plus 120,750. That is 520,900. Just to confirm that we have accurately calculated all the figures. They must all amount to that amount. So now we have completed the cost <coughs> statement. Then now we have to then allocate, uh, first calculate our equivalent uh, cost per unit. And in doing that, we first have to calculate our equivalent units. Then after we do the allocation, statement which is the last statement then now let us calculate our equivalent cost per unit then after we allocate our calculate our normal loss uh, allocated to the material and our our, call, our conversion cost so we say equivalent units And equivalent row units is exactly from material. <clears throat> Our material column, we had equivalent units of 200,000. So we divide this by 200,000. And under conversion, we had equivalent units total of 194,000. So we divide this by 194,000 units. Then after we get to our equivalent cost per unit we get to our equivalent cost per unit so now let us uh, do the calculation and it will be 356,000 divided by 200,000 uh, 356,000 divided by 200,000 is 170 Eight cents, meaning the cost of material per unit is 178. Then 164,900 divide this by 194,000. It is 85 cents. 85 cents. So now, therefore, we can say our cost per unit equals the two amount and our total cost per unit will be 85 cents plus 178 cents which is 263 cents this is our total cost per unit made of material plus 
plus our conversion cost. So now remember that in the beginning we said that not all the units will pass the point of spoilage in the current period. And we said closing inventory of 15,000 will not pass the point of spoilage. And if closing inventory does not pass the point of spoilage, that means we cannot use the shortcut method. Because the shortcut method says that we can only use that method if all the units pass the point of spoilage in the current period. And we have realized that in the current period, closing inventory of 15,000 units will not pass the point of spoilage. Therefore, we cannot use the shortcut method. Therefore, we must use the long method. And the long method says now from this stage, we must calculate our loss. Then after we calculate our, we allocate our normal loss. So this will be calculation of normal loss. And we are calculating normal loss. And we calculate it with regard to material. And we calculate our normal loss with regard to conversion cost. And our normal loss that was allocated to material was 27,750 units. <clears throat> it was 27,750. And our normal loss also allocated to conversion cost was 27,000. 750 units. Therefore, now we multiply this by the cost of material per unit and by the conversion cost per unit, which is 85 cents. Where is all this coming from? It comes from the normal loss. Our normal loss, which is this is our normal loss that was allocated. Our normal loss, which was allocated to the material column amounted to 27,000. Remember, this is the material column. So normal loss under the material column is 27,750. And also normal loss under the conversion column is the same 27,750 because normal loss occurs at the end of the process. So now we take the normal loss units. We calculate the value of the normal loss, if I may say so. So the rent value of the normal loss, that's what we are calculating. And the rent value of the normal loss will be with regards to material and it will be with regards to conversion cost. So now it will be 27,750 times this by 178 cents. And this gives us the rent value of the normal loss attributed to the raw material as 49,310.95. And the normal loss uh, attributed as the rent value to the conversion cost will be 27,750 times this by 85 cents. And this gives us 23,510.88. So now this is the total of the normal loss plus 49,395. This gives us the total as 72,000. 910.83. This is the total rent value of the normal loss that is calculated. So now we have calculated our normal loss. Then now we have to do what is called allocation of the normal loss. We do what is called allocation of the normal loss. And now this is the long method. Short uh, cut method would have ended in this calculation then after we do straight the cost allocation statement but now that we are doing it in the long method then we must allocate our normal loss allocation of normal loss and in allocating our normal loss we allocate it to remember once again our normal loss is divided into material and divided into conversion so now also when we do the allocation we do the allocation based on material 
and we do allocation based on conversion units. So now we start again with the material. We are allocating our normal loss to the material units, which is the material units column. When I'm saying the material units column, I'm referring to the column of the material. And all the units of the normal loss will be allocated uh, and they will be allocated with regards to completed units, meaning how much normal loss must be allocated to completed units and how much normal loss must be allocated to abnormal loss. Remember, normal loss will not be allocated to the closing inventory. Why? Because normal loss occurs at the end of the production. Therefore, now, in this case, closing inventory would not have passed the point of spoilage in the current period. Therefore, now, units of the closing inventory will not be sharing on the allocation of the normal loss. It's only the completed units and the abnormal units that will be allocated uh, the portion of the normal loss. So now, proceeding on that same note. <clears throat> So now we will be allocating this and we'll have to have our heading. The first one is called completed. We we'll say completed uh, for space papers because this will consume very much space. We are allocating normal loss and to the material units column, as I said to you. Then after we have completed then after we have completed we have abnormal abnormal then we have closing then we draw a line here and we draw a line then here we have units therefore now remember we are allocating our normal loss to material units column and under material units column we have completed and completed units is 147,500 then it will be 147,500 abnormal units is uh, 9,750 remember we're allocating to material column uh, abnormal is 9,750 so we'll have our 9,750. Closing is zero. Why? As I said to you, that closing units will not reach the point of spoilage. So now we cannot allocate normal loss to the units that did not reach the point of spoilage. So now we will only be allocating normal loss to material only to the units under the material column in the quantity statement that bypassed the point of spoilage. Therefore, now we have in the current period, in fact, 147,500, 147,500 uh, plus 9,750. This is 152,250. So now, in other words, we will be allocating the amount of the material of the normal loss which was allocated to material which is that 49,000 is the one that we bring it here, 49,395. And we have 49,395. Then here we have nothing. Then obviously the total, uh, total in this case, honestly, it does not matter. So now we are doing the calculations here. The heading for this says calculations. So now in the calculation, we are allocating the normal loss, which was uh, allocated to the material. Hence, we used the, the units that are under the material column. And we took the completed one. We took the abnormal units. And we said the closing inventory will not pass the point of spoilage in the current period. So we don't want to see it being allocated to our normal loss remember we are we cannot be allocating normal loss to itself so we ignore the column or the row of the normal loss because we are allocating normal loss uh, except to itself meaning we allocate it to all other units 
Then after we say divide this by 152,250, confirm that figure. It was 147,500 plus 9,750. 157,250. Yeah, I could remember that something was wrong. 157,250. Then we turn that by 147,500. Then we divide again 157,250. Turn this by 9,750. In other words, we are allocating this cost of normal loss, which was allocated to material, using the number of units as the base of allocating this cost. Remember, if there was closing inventory, that 15,000, that 15,000 will have to be added here and you say 15,000. Therefore, now, the figure that will be dividing here will have to change. But in this case, our closing inventory will not pass the point of spoilage. So now, it will not be allocated uh, in terms of the normal loss. Then after, let me do my short calculations, which is 49,395. 49,395 divide by 157,250 equals times 147,500. So this is the total now, total column. This is called total column. Total column is 46,332. Second one is 49,395. Divide by 157,250 uh, equals times by 9,750. This gives me 3,063. And obviously the total will give us the same 49,395. Then after we have allocated the normal loss to the material, then we allocate our normal loss to conversion cost. Remember, we are still allo we are allocating the second part of the normal loss, which was allocated to conversion cost. So we are allocating this to the conversion cost units. Therefore, now we will be focusing now under the conversion column. And in the conversion column, that means we are here allocating the normal loss uh, with regards to the completed units, which was completed units, and we allocate, we don't allocate to the normal loss because we're allocating normal loss. We don't allocate it back to the normal loss. Then we have 9,750 that will be allocated to ab abnormal loss. 9,000, which is the closing, will not be allocated. Why? Because closing units were not part and parcel of the units that reach the point of spoilage. So now we will not be allocating a loss to units that did not reach the point of spoilage. Therefore now this will be uh, the similar headings or in fact the same heading that we'll be using and the same rows. So now in this case we will have our, our completed. Then we have our abnormal 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 then after we have our closing I don't know why I'm writing abnormal very wrong abnormal and closing then we draw a line we have the heading that says units and under units is still 147,500 under the quantity statement completed column. 147,500. Then we take the abnormal units as 9,750. So now the total will be the same. So we take the abnormal units, which is 9,750. 
closing we don't take any units because closing will not pass the point of spoilage in the current period so there's no normal loss that will be allocated to units that don't raise the point of spoilage then we say calculations not forgetting that we first have to calculate the total of the units at the bottom which is 157,250 then after now remember we are allocating the amount of the conversion that 23,588 we are allocating 23,588 divide this by 157,250 times it by 147,500 then after we do the same with the abnormal loss we are allocating 23,588 divide that by 157,250 times this by 9,750 therefore now we will have to get to our total column remember this is the long method and you must master both methods now i will still do perhaps another video on the long method using the first in first out approach and maybe when the spoilage occurs during the period that is also very important to understand so 23,588 divide this by 157,250 uh, time the 147,500 uh, this gives me the total of 22,125 and the second one will be 23,588 divide this by 157,250 times that by 147,500 which is 2,000 22,000, no, we cannot because we're allocating 22,000. Oh, we multiply by the wrong thing. Divide by 147,500. Uh, term that by 9,750. is 1,000. 1,463. So now this will be how I would have allocated my total of the conversion cost then it will be 1463 plus 22125 which is okay 22125 plus 1463 is 23588 exactly the figure that I was allocating 23588 always make sure that you get to the same figure at the end of the day so now we can do the cost allocation statement which is the last part roman figure three cost allocation statement cost allocation statement under the cost allocation statement we have the units that were completed and transferred first completed and transferred completed and transferred i think i must just create one line completed and transferred And our completed and transferred, we know that 147,500 units were completed. And they were transferred at the cost of uh, 2 rand 63 cents. 2 rand 63 cents. Let us go and confirm the cost per unit. The cost per unit amounted to 2 rand 63 cents. These were the cost per unit. And the units that were completed and transferred were 147,500. And the cost for that regarding to material and conversion was 2 rand 63 cents. So meaning this will be 
two rand sixty three cents term this by one forty seven thousand five hundred and the total is under the total column three hundred and eighty seven thousand nine hundred and twenty five and other people they prefer to split this and i'm doing it uh, this way so that you can do it in all the ways they split it into material and split it into conversion and they will say material was 147,500 and the cost of material per unit was 1.78 then after they say 147,500 units times by a conversion cost which was 85 cents. Then after this figure will be divided into two or split into two material and conversion. At the end of the day we get the same figure. 147,500 times by 1.78 which is 262,000. 550 and 0.85 times this by 147,500 uh, which gives us 125,375 plus 262,550 we get to the same 387,925 at the end of the day so however you do it it is not uh, an issue honestly on my side then after we go to the normal loss part normal loss that was attributed or that was allocated remember we said completed and transferred so now we have to go to the normal loss that was allocated to the completed units and transferred and normal loss was allocated and here was the normal loss that was allocation of normal loss and in allocating normal loss, we allocated to completed units and transferred. And the cost for that was, remember, first with regards to material, we're under material. That was completed under material, and the amount was 46,332. That was the material part of the loss allocated to completed units. And the conversion cost of the normal loss attributed or allocated to completed units amounted to 22,125. 22,125. So from there we can add those 22,125 plus 46,332. This gives me the total uh, of 68,457 58,400 or 68,457 so now this becomes the total therefore now I have to add all the two figures then it will be 387,095 plus 68,457 and this comes up to 456,382,4456,382. So now this becomes the total cost of completed units. Total cost of completed units. Then after we go to the next part and the next part is the abnormal loss. Next part is the abnormal loss. We start with the completed and transferred, then after we have our abnormal loss. Our abnormal loss. Then we have 
abnormalos then under abnormalos we do almost the same thing material and conversion we have material we have conversion then we have the units of the normal loss that was allocated and the units of the normal loss allocated will be zero therefore now we say abnormal units which was 9750 times this by 178 cents Then after we allocate the the, the, the the units of the conversion, abnormal units under conversion 9,750, times this by 85 cents, let us go and check. Abnormal units once again, <clears throat> units of the abnormal loss were calculated and they came up to 9750 which is under material column and the units of the abnormal loss under the conversion column is the same thing and in the cost allocation statement is the same thing is the abnormal loss that comes under the material column and is the abnormal loss that comes under the conversion column so exactly that is how you do the allocation remember the cost per unit is we calculated that to be 178 cents for material and 85 cents for conversion it comes from there we had 178 and 85 cents just to remind you in case so now we do the calculation and it will be 9750 times this by 1.78 and i get to an amount of 17355 second one is 9750 times this by 0 0.85 which is 8288 remember there is no closing inventory allocated in terms of the loss plus 17,355 and this is 25,640 <clears throat> uh, let me just reconfirm that 9,750 times this by 1.78 which is 17,000 then in that 17,000 then after we have oh the normal there yeah yeah this part we have to do the allocation here because this is not the closing inventory then we look for the part of the normal loss that was allocated we look for the part of the loss that was allocated to abnormal units. Yes, there was a normal loss allocated to abnormal units. Normal loss allocated to abnormal units. The normal loss allocated to abnormal units, there we had it. There is the normal loss that was allocated to abnormal units. And that amounted to 3,063. It's only the closing that we don't allocate, remember. 3,063. And there was also normal loss alloc up allocated to abnormal units and with regards to conversion cost. And that came to 1,463. So we add these two. As we previously added these two when it comes to the completed. But the only part that will be missing is only the part of the closing. The part of the closing, there will be nothing there. So we have 3,063 that must be recorded. And this will be 
That is the normal loss which was allocated to abnormal units. Normal loss allocated to abnormal units. 1,463. 463. Therefore, now the total of that will be 3,063 plus 1,463. And this gives us the total of the normal loss allocated to abnormal uh, units as 4,526 plus 17,355 plus 8,288. This becomes 30,169. So now we have allocated all this uh, to the uh, abnormal loss. Therefore, now we go to the closing part, which is the last part of the cost allocation statement. We have closing. So under closing, we know that closing is also divided into three, material, conversion, and normal. We have material. We have conversion. And we have normal loss. Remember, there was no normal loss allocated to the closing units. There was no normal loss allocated to closing units, but there was normal loss allocated to abnormal, and there was normal loss that was also allocated to the completed units. Hence, we had the portion of the normal loss, which was that total figure. And hence, we also had the portion of the normal loss, which was this total figure. And this was taken from the allocation of the normal loss, where we allocated normal loss to the raw material units column and allocated the normal loss to the conversion units column. Please uh, just refresh on that. Make sure that you master that very, very well. So now I'm closing with the closing units. And closing units that were recorded under the material column, they amounted to 15,000 units. And the cost of material per unit is 1 rand 78 cents. The cost of material per unit is 1 rand 78 cents. And the closing units that were allocated to the conversion were 9,000. And the cost of the conversion cost per unit is 85 cents or conversion cost per unit is 85 cents and remember closing inventory there was no allocation of the normal loss under the closing inventory because closing inventory did not pass the point of spoilage it was just a mistake when i did it previously under the abnormal because abnormal is not the closing it was just abnormal therefore now we'll have fifteen thousand. If you also want to recap, remember that our closing units were calculated and allocated as 15,000 units under the material. And they were allocated as 9,000. These are the closing units. 9,000 under the conversion cost. So now it's because of that that we take the same figures. Whatever you did in your quantity statement, you have to copy that and you paste it to your calculation in most of the statements where we need the units. So now we proceed on that note and closing this uh, exercise. So now we go to the part where we are busy with. Then we just do the calculations, which is 15,000. Multiply this by 1.78. And this gives us a total of 20. 6,700. Then after we say 9,000 units conversion cost allocated to closing inventory, term this by 85, which is 7,650. And remember, closing inventory was not allocated in terms of the normal loss.
because closing inventory did not reach the point of spoilage. Because the point of spoilage is at the end when the units are complete. Therefore, we say plus 26,700 and this gives us 34,350. So now after we have recorded this, then we can calculate all the total. Then we have the first amount completed and transferred plus abnormal, then plus our closing. Therefore, now we can say 34,350 plus 30,125 or 169 plus 456,382. And this gives us the total of 520,901. Then this becomes the total cost. This becomes the total cost. Remember, this cost of 520,901, it must be equivalent or close to the cost that was allocated in the cost statement. Remember, in the cost statement, we calculated our total cost as 520,000. 900 do you see it was 520,900 so whatever you get here it must be equivalent to 520,900 or exactly in this case we have 520,901 in other words there is just a rounding off difference it's just one rand rounding off difference that's why we only have one rand it must just be a very small difference. So if this figure is completely far away from the one that is in your cost statement, therefore now something is wrong with your calculation. If it's completely different from this one, then uh, consider uh, rechecking your calculations. But please don't erase what you've done already. If you do have time to check your calculations, if you don't have, please just proceed with the exam. So now I go to the next part of the question, which I will not write anything. I'll just discuss that then after I close. So now this this was a, another just very interesting and short question on process costing uh, that you need to master and get marks whenever this appears in your exam. So the last question is just two marks. So we already have 23 marks in our pocket. So it says determine whether the shortcut method can be applied in the preparation of the quantity statement mm -hmm. for for Inyanga LTD for the month of April if loss is no longer okay at the end of the process. But when the process is 30%, remember if that is the case, that will mean that our they say if loss is okay, therefore now losses will okay 30 percent the minute loss is okay 30 percent remember closing would have been here at 60 percent this was our closing this uh, would have been our normal loss and our opening it was at 25 percent we're 25 percent here opening then now our closing would have passed the point of spoilage our opening would have passed and also are put into production therefore our response here will be yes a shortcut method could have been used if the normal loss was 30% because all the units would have passed the point of spoilage during the current period. With all of that, guys, let me say thank you. God bless you.